right tools. And for you, it's a matter of safety. We yeah. cannot have you pulled out your chair. Yeah? So I don't care what people's views are on fucking training tools. Yeah? If you get pulled out your chair and you physically can't look after your dog because you're put in a hospital, that's... Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, no, just, just like this is fine. So she's not going to stay on this collar. Yeah. This is just to, because she's so used to hitting the end of the lead, I don't mm -hmm. want her to just go smashing into the end of the lead and freak out. Mm -hmm. So everything is trying to make her life as comfortable as kind of possible. But I want her to learn when she gets to the end of that, something happens. So now she's at a current standstill in a sense. Goes in front, up and relax. Up and relax. Up. As I change direction, a little bit of pressure. Come down. Yeah. Very, very gentle. Two fingers is literally all we're doing. A little bit of pressure. Good yeah, girl, darling. Around, straight line pressure. Good girl. Yeah. She goes in front, up and relax. Up and relax. Throwing some fingers of eight into the dog, figure of eight, some spatial awareness because she's not aware of the chair or anything, and then it's in the wrist, literally up and relax, she goes that way, a little bit of pressure, she comes in, pressure turns off, up and relax, up and relax. We've taken a bit of the edge off of her, which was necessary. Because if she, when she's hitting it all over the place, she's not going to be able to take any information. It's going to be more uncomfortable. So, would you recommend going forward and going out? Uh, no, you won't have to because once she understands the concepts and everything, you'll be fine. Okay. Can't hurt to throw a ball for five, ten minutes. Let her calm down, then go into the exercise. That bit's absolutely fine. Okay. But we don't want to battle all this pent up energy. Yeah, yeah. But go back to the tools so the harness is what gives the dog the full control we want a dog on a harness when they're pulling sleds when they're tracking things like that a step up from the harness would be say a collar yeah a step up from a collar would be like a marshmallow collar a marking out then you've got your slippy type collars your dog dog collars your slip leads things like that your choke chain then you have a halty then you have a front collar right so, sometimes with a slip lead, if the dog's all over the place and choking, it actually pulls more to try and get away from it. And because you're in a like that, it's hurting you, so you can't be relaxed enough. So what happens is the dog starts fighting and pulling more. The halty can frustrate a dog when it pulls and it rubs up into their eyes. This, you can see she's desperate to go forward, but you see every time she goes forward and I do that, she moves backwards. Because she's understanding that sensation, yeah. if I go in the direction of that lead in a sense, the opposite direction, it turns off. So, I suppose you don't really know, baby, but how is that feeling for her different from martingale? Because it's not choking. So it's different, to, it works the same as a martingale, so a half choke, so it does distribute the pressure, but it's the prongs that mimic the fight that makes it uncomfortable when she goes rogue. So the prong collar works like the same way as a halty in the sense that it creates discomfort. Yeah. If a halty was nice and comfortable for the dog, the dog would still pull. Mm -hmm. That's why when you put a dog on a harness that already knows how to pull, it still pulls. But yeah. you've just made it comfortable to pull. So now, if... But using the halty when I'm walking, yep. it's fine. Yeah. 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 But, but let, let's break it down step by step. So first thing we do is we get her on this. Yeah. Second thing we do is we bring out everybody I've got here that, and get them walking over, making sure she's responding nicely. Hey, excuse me. 
So look, straight away, you see that? She wants to go. Now she understands the lead and some communication. She understands if I pull up to actually stop moving forward, but actually backtrack a little bit. Now people can walk towards me. Shake my hand. How are you doing, Steve? Right, thank you. A little bit of pressure up. Uh, don't even go there. Yeah. Oh, no, not me. No, that's good. Aaron, quick, 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 my friend. So look, Aaron, come over. Hello, mate. How are you doing? How are you doing? Nice to meet you. A little bit of pressure up. Hello, mate. How are you doing? Yeah. So now I can start to say hello to people, a little bit of pressure up, but she doesn't understand the lead, like I said, she just knows to smash into it and she's going to get to that person, smash into it, she's going to get that fuss, yeah, come here Steve, so I want to wait, I want to wait for her to be calm, come forward Steve, I want to wait for her to stop fighting, can say hello to the dog Steve, hello, There you go. So she can still have that little bit of fuss. But look, she's on the lead. So if she jumps up, I'm just going to go pop on that lead. Not going to be angry of her. I'm just going to use that lead because she now understands pressure. Yeah. What it means, I can now, if she jumps up, walk away, Steve. Walk towards her. There she is there. Sit in nicely, thinking about it. Ah, ah. Right there, I can just block. Walk away, walk towards her, Steve. That's it, walk towards her. Say hello to her. Hello. There we go. Belly rubs are better. We'll always take belly rubs instead. Oh, I'm special. Yes, you are. That's when she usually jumps off again. Alright, away. There we go. Yeah. I do think she's a bit worn out, though. Yeah, but also it's the lead. Okay. Yeah. She's got no stamina. <laughs> yes, she has. <laughs> she hasn't, because when you actually exercise her properly, she's like, oh, fucked. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so she... But the, the reality is, right, she has all this pent-up energy and it has to go yeah. somewhere. <laughs> right? So with a backpack on and the right training tools, she'll be absolutely fine. Okay. Yeah, so we're going to bring her in here a second. get some people to come and walk past yeah. but I'm going to do it like the world's worst person that you walk past in a sense like oh, oh, yeah. the sea, look straight away as soon as you start going a bit more oh, look yeah. at the doggy I love the doggy yeah, yeah. Been time but look see how she just corrects herself yeah oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah I don't even need to hold it no right tools yeah. and for you it's a matter of safety you yeah, yeah. cannot have you pulled out your chair yeah, so I don't care what people's views are on training tools. Yeah, if 
you get pulled out of your chair and you physically can't look after your dog because you're put in a hospital desk. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This means she gets to go out of you every day. This means she gets to go on adventures with you. This means she and you get to go yeah. out. And yeah. I'm less worried and yes. stressed and anxious. So just have a look up and down and I'll get people to start with that. Wait, do I? So just then I... Yeah, just scoot her off. That's it. Scoot her off. See that? See the difference? Do you know what I mean? Like, just to try and get her not too fixated. So what we're going to do, Alex, come behind me and just approach the lady. Yeah. So obviously, just keep your hand on that lead. She'll quite relaxed. Yeah. And just walk over and just say hello. But I want you to stop the dog jumping. There you go. Just keep that dog under control. See the difference? Yeah. Yeah, because like I said, she, when she sees people and they're close enough, she's pulled you out of her chair. That that can't happen. But you see how, yeah. because she understands the lead and she understands what that pull up means, that yeah. you pull up and the dog gets it, pull up the dog yeah. gets it. You can use it if you've got a dog that lunges at people and a dog that jumps at people. Yeah. Yeah. And then she lays down. And then if you've got some treats or anything, that's when you can give her treats. Okay. <laughs> But yeah, instead of going forward now, she's learning to go backwards. Back, yeah. She doesn't have to say hello to everyone. Come here, Ren. Nice. Good. Yeah. Yeah, so you get the fuss from mum. You don't need fuss from strangers, you need fuss from mum. But it's about you being able to, if you stop, you've got the dog. Yeah? If you're moving, you've got the dog. Yeah? And just scoot her off. Go on, let's, go. let's go. And off we go. Pretty cool, right? Like that. How's that? Yeah, I've got it. <laughs> when she was on the halt, it was the same. I didn't need to use it. When, like you said, when seeing people, that's working instantly. Yeah. So just stop. Something people should get in the habit of if there's a dog that jumps is this. Go over, say hello to the dog like this. But when you finish, take a step back. Yeah. yeah. Because if you stay in that same spot, then the dogs often jump up yeah. to get more attention. Whereas if you take one step back, even if the dog goes to jump, the dog doesn't successfully complete that jump. Yeah. Marley? See, on this though, if I go back, she then gets a bit... Yeah. Stroke, 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 stroke. Hello, darling, I love you, look at you. And then just a step back. And then you've got the lead. Yeah. yeah. But if somebody goes, can I say hello to her? She's friendly. Yeah. You just keep that short part relaxed lead. You wait until she's calm. Yeah. yeah. And then you say, when you finish stroking her, can you just take one step back? Yeah. You don't have to tell them why, just say, just take I one step of, back. Yeah, I pretty much do that yeah. anyway, if I let them. But it is, people will often stay there, stroke, 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 hello darling, hello, like that. So and then look, 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 see that? Because I didn't take a step back. Yeah. And now watch this. Hello darling, hello. Hello, hello. Wow. One step back. Yeah. Because that creates, like I said, so the dog's there, I can jump. 
but all of a sudden, yeah, because it's all of those together. So when people go, I tried the pull up method, I'm like, okay, but if you tried it on a harness, that's why it didn't work. Yeah, I tried to get the dog calm and you keep it on a lead, but if you're using the wrong tools, yeah. that's why it's not working. Yeah, everything we've done matters from the lead that we're using to the backpack to the waiting for her to be cut. Yeah, so it's not any one thing, it's all of that coming together. And that's where people go wrong. They'll try to do one thing, but they're not looking at the big picture. Yeah, good girl. Because I, I get her to um, get her to um, sit to see people, and she's like really excited. Um, and she, she'll eventually calm down just with her tail wagging and not for, to say hello. But as soon as they approach her, she's back to getting all crazy again. Yeah. So we we we, we can do that. Let's get some more people. Looks like her dog, Sam. Sam's, yeah. Right. So one at a time. Just come over, say hello. Not to the dog, just to the person. Oh, hello. <laughs> nice and chilled out. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can stroke the dog. You stroke the dog, not the person. Yeah. So you let the dog know that's a really good choice. The people don't need to actually stroke her. You can. It's man's best friend, it's not stranger's best friend, although because it's a staffy, yeah, they think everyone's their best friend. Yeah. This is one of the most people friendly dogs on the planet, right? But you want to teach her that all the fuss comes from you, mum's got control, and this is hard for her, but you're remaining in control, yeah? Good girl. Calmly, because we don't want to excite that. So every time she makes a good choice, mum says hello to me, walk away. And we'll end the sofa. Got this sofa. Hello. hello, hello. Sit, sit. Less yeah. words, just. Because you were throwing two quick sits up. Sit, yeah. sit. And then what happens is you start to, you'll throw in more commands. Yeah. And it'll get frenzy. Yeah. Yeah. So. Just don't even tell it to yeah. sit. Right, right. Just, you can tell her enough. Firm little right. pop on that lead. Good girl. Good girl. Now. Less is more when it comes to dogs, yeah. yeah, because sit, 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 no, stop it, sip it, get down, get down, yeah. no, leave it, no, yeah. you become frantic when the dog's frantic and all that happens is you just become more yeah. frantic, yeah, 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 so, hey, sit, good girl, yeah, yeah. yeah. now we're going to let Sophie say hello to the dog when it's slightly calmer, I want you to say hello to the dog, the way you want to, but when you finish saying hello to the dog, I want you to take a step back. Yeah? Stroke, then step back. Sit. Right, say hello to the dog, I know you're desperate too. Stroke, 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 then step back. There you go. And it, I'm, I'm yeah, but again, it doesn't. Yeah. But, like Sophie. <laughs> Sophie's desperate too. Sophie wants to roll around on the floor yeah, with the dog. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so bring your dog back a little bit. Molly back. Use the lead, there you go. Ask Marley to sit. Say hello to Marley. Stroke, 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 step back. There you go. Yeah. See? Sit. 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 See? You can do it. And this is typical Marley getting excited, but yeah. because we're using the right tools yeah, yeah. and everything and we're slowing everything down, yeah. you're able to maintain control. Like I said, if it's on the halty at this stage, it's rubbing up into the eyes and it's frustrating the dog. If your dog's on a harness, then you're just freaking hoping the brakes work or you don't get pulled out of the chair and yeah. things like so that. So where I was using the harness for when I'm at the park yeah. and I put on the lobby leads. So you're saying just to use that on the prong? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely no problem with that whatsoever. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, she's not she's not going to be smashing into the end of it that much and if she does she don't do it once yeah it's not going to puncture her and make her fucking gush out I mean, with blood she's pretty good actually yeah. when she's on the, not the lobby resource guarded yeah and who's who who they should tell off who's in the wrong who's in the right yeah. so like i said if she's got an antler for example yeah and she's laying down minding her own business 
but then your other dog just walks in the room, doesn't even look at her, is nowhere near her, and she starts growling, tell you tell her off, yeah. yeah, because she's fucking overreacting, nothing's happening to her, you're being a dick, right? Now, if she's laying down, got an antler, the dog's walks in the room, and she's absolutely fine, but then the dog comes over to investigate what she's got, you tell the other dog off, because that other dog's now being rude. The dog just walking into the room, getting growled at, that's doing nothing to the dog, she's overreacting, so she's held accountable there, right? But if a dog comes into her personal space when she's got something, like a food bowl or a bone or something like that, then you tell the other dog off because the other dog shouldn't be pestering her. The same being stealing to children. When a dog's eating, leave them alone. When a dog's got a bone, leave them alone. When a dog's sleeping, leave them alone. Same rules apply if you've got another dog. If she's got a bone, the other dogs need to leave her alone. If she's sleeping, the other dogs need to leave her alone. If she's eating, the other dogs need to leave her alone. They shouldn't be in her personal space. People, yeah. Then. When people. It comes to people. Okay. So when it comes to people, if she's guarding high value things like antlers and things like that, I wouldn't be giving her to her straight away. I'd be basically removing privileges from her. This is why she needs to be on a lead. Yeah. I'm going to make sure I've got this lead, but I'm going to send the other dog away. If I can't visit, uh, physically send the other dog away verbally, that dog needs to be on a lead so I can put it away. Because again, just like the toys, she can start, the other dog's being rude. This is where we go wrong in the multi dog household. We're fussing the dog, fussing the dog. Then the other one comes over and we don't want to leave that dog out in our mind. Yeah. So what we do is we start fussing that dog. But the reality is that dog is being rude. It's just pushed her straight out the way. Right, and you're rewarding that dog, so you're going, you're being good, I'm stroking, stroking you, but you're being a pushy bastard, but I'm going to reward you and stroke you. So the dogs know you don't control that personal space, yeah. so they start to control your personal space. So if another dog come over to me right now, I would stop stroking her for a second, I would put myself between that dog, go, yeah? and then I would go back to doing it. If I wanted that dog to come in my personal space, I would then invite the dog, block, get that dog to sit there, stroke that yeah. dog. Yeah. So you have to control your personal space, the same way you control food, the same way you control toys, the same way you control bones, okay. yeah? But she needs to be on a lead, so you can easily block, block, yeah. yeah? Have them all on little grab handle leads, so you can lead them away. But they just learn, oh, I'm getting a fuss, I want in on their action. So when I use the packets, okay. So think of your son as a firework. So it when really is actually. yeah. So so when fireworks go off, my yeah. dogs know their crates, their safe space. So I stick my dogs in the crate and I give them a bone, and that keeps them occupied. If they're out of the crate and fireworks are going off, they pace back and forth and get anxious. Is that shut door? Oh, yeah, shut door. Right. So when your son is having an outburst, like a firework in a sense, yeah. what happens is. This makes her really uncomfortable and she feels the need to get between you yeah. and your son and she starts growling. So think of your son as a firework. Mm -hmm. When he's having an outburst, pop her in the crate, give her a nice antler, a nice bone, something like that that she can chew on, door shut, blank it down so she's in her safe spot, yeah. she's safe and secure and she doesn't have to deal with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I do with my dogs and fireworks are going off because like I said, uh, I don't know what Myla's going to be like with them. But Roxy paces back and forth, back yeah, and forth. But if I put her in the crate of a bone, she settles down and goes to sleep.